Welcome back to chapter three. In this video, we'll be looking at how to create formulas using the if function and nesting formulas. On this board, I'm using a drop down column, which you can see right here, to select multiple choices from a list of services that can be added to a video request. They can include subtitles, a voiceover, as well as special effects. And with each additional service, the idea is there is going to be an associated cost or an additional fee. So this is where my if function is going to come into play. And I'll show you exactly how I'm going to set that formula up in just a moment. If you are in fact new to the formula world and the if function is something that's unfamiliar, I do want to explain that the if function is a type of formula which is used to create a conditional statement and it will return or output a value depending on whether the set condition is met or not. So what exactly does this mean? For more context, let's go over to my slides. As mentioned, I have associated costs or fees according to the different services that are selected from my dropdown. So this is right where I am going to define the conditions that I'm setting. The idea is if my dropdown selection or label is equal to subtitles, the cost is going to be $100. If the dropdown label is voiceover, then the cost is $250. And finally, if my drop down selection or label is special effects, then that additional fee or cost is going to be $500. So going back over here to my board, I'm going to show you the first if statement that I've created called um, my subtitles column. So clicking into this column, it will bring up my formula builder. You can see that I have selected my if function from right here, and then I have selected my drop down column labels. Before I go ahead and talk more about what all of this means, the if function is another great example of using the example that's provided in our formula builder. Um, so, right here, the idea is that if a condition is met where a column is greater than 100, it will output the text big deal. Otherwise, if it doesn't meet that condition and it's not greater than 100, then it will output small deal in text. Going back to our specific example, the idea is if my drop down label, so I'm going to select my drop down label from here. Um, if my drop down label is equal to subtitles, then I want to output the number 100. Otherwise, it's equal to zero. So this did um, output the values as expected. I do have subtitles equal to my drop down label, so it's going to output 100. Voiceover, zero. Special effects, zero. Now, right here, this is a special example. I do have subtitles included but I also have special effects. So right now my formula is only looking for that one specific term subtitles. It's not going to take into consideration whether or not um, subtitles might be aligned or associated with other labels. Um, so right now it is just going to output that zero. We will go into more details in terms of how to solve for this a little bit later on. Now what I'd like to do is talk about how to actually take this basic if formula statement one step further. So what I would like to do now is actually calculate for all of the conditions. Um, okay, so what I want to do to take my formula one step further um, is to actually include the conditions and associated cost for all of my drop down columns. So rather than it outputting zero if it doesn't equal 100, I wanted to output the associated cost according to the conditions that I set. So 
um, the cost for the voiceover will show here, the cost for special effects will show here, um, rather than just the $100 additional fee for my subtitles. To successfully create or build this type of if statement, what I'm going to introduce you to is the nesting method, which is a trick that we often use to break down each conditional formula. And then we will use the sum function to summarize it all up into one big if statement. All right, so right here, if I do scroll over to the right hand side, you can see that what I've done is I've created an individual formula column for each dropdown option, or in my case, additional service. So we have here, um, if the dropdown label equals voiceover, output 250, otherwise zero. The same goes for special effects, output 500, otherwise zero. Um, and so I have that set up for each of those different labels. Now what I want to do is after creating my if statement for each service, I want to actually add all of these different um, formula columns that I've set up together using my sum function to get the final formula result in this column right here, my additional service cost. Okay, so after creating the if statement for each service, I then added all of the formula columns together using the sum function to get the final formula result in my additional service cost formula column right here. So you can see that I've added my sum function first and foremost, which we can find right here. And then what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've actually copy and pasted each of the formulas that I've built in each of these columns. And then I made sure to close my sum with that end parentheses. So I just simply copy and pasted this. I copy and pasted this, and then I copy and pasted this in here so that I could actually calculate for the sum of all three columns. Now it is really important when you do copy and paste, you always want to include commas to separate between the three different formulas that I've created so that my sum function knows to add those formulas as three different pieces um, or three different values. And then as mentioned, I did go ahead and add um, make sure I have that or rather just made sure I have that end parentheses to make sure that that formula is set. So now what you can see is rather than having to create different columns for each of the different values, I created one larger if statement so that if my dropdown label equals subtitles 100, if it equals voiceover 250, if it equals special effects 500, and it all will show up in one formula column. For your reference, I do want to just show you the if slides that I have prepared so you can see those specific formulas that I created. So first off, the more simplified if function um, example that we went through where if my label is equal to subtitles, output 100 or zero, and then this larger nested formula right here where I am calculating the sum of these three different formulas. And again, making sure I include those commas to separate the three different formulas. Let's say we want to take it one step further and we want to calculate the cost of multiple additional services or drop down column selections at once. To do so, I can actually go ahead and use the if function and the search function together. So that leads me to this next formula that we're going to create right here. The main difference between using an if statement alone and using if function and search function together is that an if statement alone means that you have to write each combination separately which we had just done. Um, whereas when using the if search function together, this actually isn't required. So the search function will actually just search for drop down 
values. So this is the example of the formula that I've gone ahead and set up where I don't have to create these different if statements. I actually right here have gone ahead and now it's searching for the keywords, subtitles, voiceover, and special effects. And so if it is the case where the label is greater than zero, then it's going to output 100. If my voiceover label is greater than zero, which means ultimately if it does meet that condition, it will output 250. And then if after searching for special effects, the label is greater than zero or um, does meet the condition where it has the special effects label, then it's going to output 500. So let's go ahead. I'm going to just show you over here where I have this set up. And in my functions, you'll see the if as well as search can be found right here. And this is going to also give you an example of how to use this specific function. Additionally, rather than commas to separate the different searches that I'm exercising, I just have used the add um, symbol right here to separate all of those different searches. Okay, so this concludes our third chapter where we dive into the if function. Next up, we will be exploring a popular formula which calculates the number of days between a date and today.